Well, welcome back everybody to Beer Brackets. Today we are tackling a style of beer that we haven't touched yet on the channel, Alessandro. And this was one that you recommended, man. And I think you're as excited as I am to review this. I am, I am. <laughs> I couldn't wait. This beer is pretty accessible throughout North America. I was able to find it easily in Ontario where I am. You can find it easily down in the States. This one is actually Fuller's London Pride, original ale, as it says there on the can. The Fuller's Brewery out of the UK, out of England, was actually a family owned brewery from 1845 until 2019 when it was bought by Asahi, makers of Super Dry. So bought by Asahi, but for a hundred 50 some odd years was a family owned and run brewery, which is pretty impressive, right? And the London Pride is their flagship beer. You know, some people say it's the iconic beer of the capital city, London. So this is a big one, man. This is a big one. For anybody who doesn't know, we're actually going to have an Inside the Brackets episode that you can keep an eye open for where we're going to explore this style of beer a little bit further. So we won't go into too much detail on it right now. But London Pride is what is known as, well, it's a British ale, right, Alessandro? Yes. But you might hear it referred to as a bitter. So most British ales are generally in the realm of pale ales, as we know them over here. But they're generally in the UK, they were called bitters traditionally, which is something that started in the 1800s from what I was reading as a way to kind of differentiate this kind of beer from more pale beers like lagers or pilsners or anything that would be in that general style. They would call them bitters because they were a little bit more bitter. They're a little bit hoppier, a little bit more flavorful. And so that name kind of stuck. And if you want to know more about this, again, check out our Inside the Brackets. There's a whole bunch of different classifications of bitters, this being a premium bitter, which is a beer that is um, in that four point, let's say seven or 4.8 percent alcohol range or higher. So we have a premium bitter. I think we should crack them open. I think we should get right into let's, it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh, that exploded. I love a good British ale. Isn't it delicious? By the way, how's our little uh, cap box over there going? You know what? I was what just looking at it and I, I started <laughs> noticing that we are actually getting quite far up. We're almost up at the Europe level here with the little mountain in the center, see? I guess I might have to shake it a little bit to see. Shake it up a little bit, too. There we are. Oh yeah, Africa, middle of Africa. We're doing good. Not bad. Not bad, we're, getting, we're drinking enough beer. That's, that's always a good sign. Always a good sign. Always <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> you know, we like to call ourselves beer barometers from time to time. That's a barometer of how much beer we're drinking. And it's letting us know that we're drinking enough. Man, look at that. I love the color on this. It's so beautiful. Look at that head. All right, my friends, it has come down to the first of our categories, the aroma. Aroma cheers. Aroma cheers, good friend. Hmm. Oh, you get started, good sir. Let me know. What do you think? Notes that I get are almost like biscuit malt character. Yeah. It's sweet. It's, it's not quite savory as we normally tend to go toasty. Mm. It's more on the sweet side of the, the malt spectrum. And then more on the sweet side, you have all these subtleties of hops aromas that are coming through to me more as a little bit of underlying earthiness. Oh man, like it's, it's complex. It's nice. It's it, and it's inviting. It, it could almost be a three if it wasn't that like the sweetness, at least for me on this one here, it's a little yeah. bit overpowering. So I really gotcha. like it. But the fact that it's almost like has that like sweet malt character is a little bit too much for me to bring it up to a three. So I'm going to stick with the two on this one. Yeah, no, two out of three, I think is a very, very fair score. There's definitely some maltiness on the aroma and raisins and biscuits. So uh, however you would break that down, but there's definitely those two main things that are clashing together on it. And I think that's a characteristic of this type of beer. Um, so it was expected and they do it really well. It's really balanced. If the aroma is not overwhelming, it doesn't it doesn't jump out of the glass as much as I was expecting it to. But it's nice. Um, you know, if I, for me to be a three on three, I would just want it to be a little bit stronger. And it's interesting that you mentioned that the sweetness was a little strong. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that you're drinking it out of a bottle instead of how I have it out of the can. Maybe there's a little bit of a difference there, but the aroma's a little bit muted on mine. So it's a two on three for me as well. This is great. Really, really delicious. I'm excited to taste. My friend, oh, this is our favorite part. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go right in for the taste. Mmm. Yeah. And that's oh, really wow. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Here, mm. yeah. the sweetness that was more present on the nose, I feel like mm. quite up front, 
dissipates and you get that nice bitterness that start building up slowly and gently and it starts like yeah. like almost like in the center of your tongue and it, it builds up towards the edge at least for me and you start getting all these different notes uh that are coming from your you know the the retronasal aroma uh so you start getting that earthiness that i was talking about more distinctly yeah the raisins are showing up and the breadiness that sweet biscuit breadiness is coming up at the end for me definitely the bitterness is what i what predominates here on the palate i think still like i'm going to stick with the two uh, not because I don't like it, actually, I like it a lot, but to push it up to a three, it would really need to have some binding element there. I feel like it's almost like it, it shifts immediately to that bitterness and then like it fades a little bit. So there's, there's a little bit of a lack there on the palate for me at least. What do you think, my friend? Man, I'm a little torn on this one. So, you know, there's definitely, you can taste the hops. It's a little bit more hop forward than what I was expecting from uh, a British ale. This one is a little bit more subtle than I expected. So the, the hops are there, but I was looking for something else as a base, either for, um, you know, they talk about the biscuit a lot when you read about this beer. Uh, when you go on their site, the first thing they say is, you know, a really biscuity aroma and taste, you know, raisins, deep, dark fruit. And I'm getting a little hints of that, but I would have liked more of it on the taste. It's a little bitterness forward for me. Oh. Um, and I, I would like more of a stronger sort of bready base and it, it's a little subdued. I find it's a little, um, you know, we were just talking about the Abbott Ale, which that one was a little bit more full body. You have the raisins, you have the biscuit and the bread and, you know, the standard things from the British Ale, they're there, but they're much more forward on the taste, which I really enjoy. I'm actually going to give this one a one on three for the taste, not because it's not good, just because I'd want more. It's leaving me wanting a little bit more. Everything that's there is really nice, but come on, come on, Fullers, give me more. Give me more of that. <laughs> but you know what? That makes it really easy drinking. So I think that's a positive for some people, but for me, it breaks it down to a one. But my friend, you know, for mouthfeel, you know what we gotta do. It's refresh time. It's refreshing time. <whistles> Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. It's a beautiful looking beer. I gotta it say is. the color that they get on it. It's fantastic. If we, if we had a rating for, for coloration, <laughs> this would be a solid three on three. It's amazing, isn't it? Like a jewel yeah. there in the glass. It is like a jewel like an amber jewel. It's kind of like those, you know, those pieces of amber in Jurassic Park, the, mm. you know, the little, the mosquitoes were trapped in for millions Perfectly of years. Sad, that, my friend. that they took the DNA out of in order to make the T-Rex <laughs> that attacked, uh, that attacked Newman from Seinfeld. I was taking one last sip. Mm. Mm. So on the mouthfeel, mm. I think this for me is where it's, it's falling a little bit short compared to the first two categories. In the sense that it's very light, it's refreshing, but it has a little bit, and again, like that might depend on the fact that I'm drinking out of the bottle, like I'm sure uh, you know, on, on tap, it would be a completely different story. It has a little bit of that stickiness that, uh, I mm -hmm. describe it as stickiness. Uh, it is this feeling that leaves on my tongue that I, I find a little bit of pudding for me. Uh, so it can't quite make it up there in the high numbers. So I'm going to stick with the one here in the mouthfeel for me. It, it's good, but it's 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 a one. It's a solid one. Yeah, you know what? I agree. It's a one on three for me as well. Hmm. Now I take another sip. There's a very decent amount of carbonation. It's it's very bubbly. It's very pleasant in that sense. It's the bitterness is a little bit a little bit forward in a sense as well. So you get the tingling from the bitterness, the carbonation. Aside from that, there's not much else. Like you said, it's a little bit oily, a little bit sticky. There's nothing too interesting there. It's kind of really basic in terms of a mouthfeel. There's nothing offensive, but you know, it's good. It's good enough. So it's a one on three mouthfeel. The finish, I think, is where this beer gets really interesting. So I'll let you go ahead and tell me what you think. Oh. I can't agree more, my friend. Like the finish, I think is where, uh, at least in my experience, a lot of the British ales really shine in the fact that the way they use the hops to present the finish is quite unique. I feel like that a lot of that comes from the use of the hops that they do in these beers. And they really master uh, the skill because they're able like to get these subtleties it's almost like looking at the painting with all those shades and they're able yeah. to use and, and pinpoint like different elements. Like in this beer, Absolutely. for example, you get 
uh, that uh, initial very strong bitterness that I described in the taste, it builds up very gently, but it fades into this like more dark fruit for me. And then at the very end, I get that earthiness that is characteristic. Mm-hmm. You'll find in a lot of like, or at least I, I personally find in a lot of English uh, ales. And then it transitions back into that like nice dark fruit. Very gentle, very subtle. We're talking about very, very gentle flavors on this one here. So very uh, gentle. Gentle's the word. You're right. Gen- everything is gentle about this beer. Everything. It, and I think that's what's giving it some lower scores on my case, at least, the gentleness. Which which I think is is like you mentioned before, is it's it's probably also one of the things that this beer is going for. Being yeah, like you're a, probably right. Almost like a an introduction, a gentle and very well represented example of that style. Uh, so I think that like the finish is complex. For me, it's 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 lacking a few elements that I know I've had in other British ales that here to me are lacking a little bit. So again, like not because I think that this one is not a good beer, but because I've had others that, in my opinion, like represent. Uh, more the style or that, that I like more, uh, I'm going to stick with the, with the one on the finish. What do you think, my friend? That's interesting that you said that. And I agree with you hundred percent. And I know you haven't tried the Abadale and I don't want to bring it up too many times in this review, but I think it's a good example of a uh, British style ale that just takes all the different parts of this that we've talked about, all the different parts of the aroma, all the different parts of the taste and just amplify it a little bit more. So everything's a little bit more present. And I think you're right about the fact that it's meant to be smooth. It's meant to be gentle. It's meant to be easy drinking. And I can see how that makes this beer very sessionable. So what I would tell people is if you're looking for a beer that is a little bit hoppier than your average lager or your average Pilsner, uh, something with a little bit more flavor, like an introduction, a little brief introduction to the pale ale category. If you want something that's somewhere in the middle, this is a really good beer for that. So when we talk about finish, Everything we've talked about already without repeating myself too much hmm. is there. You get a little bit of the raisin. The raisin's very present on there and you can replace that again with any kind of dark fruit. It's very biscuity, it's very mouth forward. You get the hops. So you have those three, that triangle, that trifecta of three different elements coming together on the finish. It's it's nicely balanced. It's really, really good. It's just not present enough for me to be able to give it that high of a score. Uh, it's a delicate balance, right? You want it to be present, but you don't want it to go too far. Yeah. But on the finish, it leaves a nice, you know what? I think I'm going to go a little bit higher. So I'm going to go with a two on the finish because it's it's pleasant. And I think if I was drinking a pint or let's say, let's say I was in a, a pub. But after work, you and I, Alessandra, we met at a pub thirsty for a pint and bartender put down a nice cold pint of London Pride in front of us. I would happily drink two or three of these and it would be great. And as an overall experience, my friend, what do you think? about Fuller's London Pride? I have to give it a solid two because um, while like for me, the mouthfeel and the finish were mm. like a little bit short, like the, the overall experience is, is of a very good beer. It represents the style. It, it represents like some of the characteristics. Uh, I like the word that you use, delicate. I think yeah. that perfectly described gentle and delicate are two words that I would use a great introduction so it's amazing that it's uh, so easily accessible uh, because here in Florida, at least, it's like we're pretty far away from England. So the, the fact that we can enjoy beer like this and, and at least have that hint, like being over there in a pub is, is amazing. So that that's a well-deserved two for me. You know, one of the things they pride themselves on is using locally grown hops. So you know that everything in this beer is very English. As an overall experience, I'm going to go two on three as well. It's it's teetering. It's a low two. It's it's very good. Like I said just before, it's very sessionable. You have some character there. You have some body there. You feel it as you're drinking it. It has soul, man. So if you're looking for something not offensive that has a little bit of flavor to it, London Pride's the way to go. All right, guys. So we have our final scores on Fuller's London Pride, and it comes out to a two point six six on five, which in our rating system is a good beer. You know, you think 2.66 on five, it might sound like, oh, that's like, you know, what, 55%, let's say, if you're doing an exam. So you saw how we break it down. I was actually expecting a little bit more from this because I really do, like Alessandro, you too, I really enjoy British ales. But that's the the downfall of sessionable beers is that they tend not to score too high on things like mouthfeel, on things like maybe taste or aroma. They tend to lose a little bit there. Still, like you said, 
I think the key element here is after work, go in the pub, <laughs> yes. there, you get that pint and mm. you're just so happy to have that pint and you know, so you're happy. just drinking it and maybe you're having a second, third, and you're closing your view brackets. As a final verdict, guys, I mean, you saw the score, but I would happily take a nice cold pint of London Pride any day of the week. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Keep an eye out for Inside the Bracket episode on what is British Ale. It's coming soon. If you want more content, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of the family. Cheers, everyone. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Do not forget to close your British Ale beer brackets. Never forget. Maybe do. Never forget.